Today we're talking about the Tone Empire Firechild compressor, which is a model of the infamous Fairchild 670 compressor. So if you guys wanna learn what this can do for your music, stick around after this introduction. Welcome everybody, I'm Dan Spencer and I am the Audio Sorcerer. So this is the channel where I teach you how to perfect your audio recording, mixing and mastering skills. So before we get to the video, make sure you guys smash that like button. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know when we have new videos coming out. So without further ado, Tone Empire reached out to me and asked me to do a review on the Firechild, their new plugin here. And before we talk about it here, I just wanna let you guys know that all of the thoughts and opinions in this video are mine. So I just wanna get that out of the way first. So the Firechild plugin here is their version of a Fairchild compressor, which is a very, very famous compressor. And they are very hard to come by today. And if you can actually find one, they're extremely expensive. There are several companies out there that make hardware emulations, um, and those are also very expensive. But essentially this compressor was used heavily in broadcast because it had a fast attack time and a slow release. So it was able to help avoid clipping. And with that being said, it's not an extremely punchy compressor, it's more of a smooth compressor. Now, what they did was they actually modeled three different hardware units that had slightly different electrical components and different stages of tube life. So if you look at the picture here, you'll see A, B, and C. And then they also have an off option, which doesn't use any of that. So it's like basically a clean version of the compressor. So that's pretty unique to this particular plugin. And then they also added some modern components to this compressor for the modern mix engineer slash producer. So they actually have some sidechain options here with a low pass filter and high pass filter. And they also have a knee option for the compressor, which those are not available on the original Fairchild, okay? So depending who you talk to, there are many use cases for a Fairchild compressor. For me, I only really like it on two things. I like it on piano and I like it on vocals. So that's what we're gonna test it on in this video. So first we'll test it on piano, then we'll test it on vocals, and then we'll compare it to the IK Multimedia version of a Fairchild compressor, because that's the other one that I have in my collection. And then hopefully after that, you'll be able to determine whether this is a plugin that you want to add to your collection or not. And if you do end up liking the plugin, I do have a link in the description below where you can go purchase it. So with that being said, let's actually first take a look at the user interface of the Firechild by Tone Empire. All right, here we are in Pro Tools, and I just wanna go over the user interface of the Firechild quickly here, just so you have a good idea of how to use it. So starting on the left-hand side here, we got the stereo link control here, and this links the left and right controls. And then here beneath this, we have our three profiles. Again, this is of the three units that they modeled. These are all gonna sound a little bit different. And beneath this, we have an option to turn all of those off. And this makes this compressor essentially bypass all of the tube circuitry. And then beneath that, we have our bias. And this gives us even further tuning of these three different profiles here. So it allows us to get even a little bit of a different sound. And then here we have our VU meters, and this is gonna show us our gain reduction. Over here, this is our input gain. This is our threshold. So the more we turn this up, that's to the right, we're gonna get more gain reduction. This is our release here. So it goes between one and six. One is the fastest release. Six is the slowest release. And none of these are all that fast because again, this is a slow release compressor. Down here, this is our output gain. This is the knee. So basically a knee on a compressor, if you don't know what that is, it basically affects the transition between the non-compressed and compressed states of a audio signal running through it, okay? So on zero, that's going to be a, I believe a soft knee. And then if we turn it up, that's gonna be a harder knee. 
And then here we have our mix knob, so we can use this as a parallel compressor if we want to. So that's something that most modern compressors have. And over here we have our side chain section, and this is the side chain gain here. And then we have our low pass filter and high pass filter, but to enable this, we need to actually press the side chain button here. And what this means is if we did the high pass filter, so this is set at 20 hertz now, if we were to bring this up to, I don't know, we'll say 139. Basically any frequencies below 139 would not trigger this compressor to compress, okay? That's how the side chain works, all right? Across the bottom here, these are your presets. Now, mine doesn't come with any presets. Now, the manual says it should, so let me know if you have this compressor and you have presets. I'm just kind of curious. Mine does not have them. Uh, you can create your own and save them. It does have oversampling, uh, 2x, 4x, and 8x. And uh, really, that's pretty much it here. So with that being said, uh, we are going to use this on the piano now. Um, before I actually show you how I have it set and how I like it on a piano, we're going to test all of the different models over here and we'll kind of, you know, compress them really hard. We'll test them lightly, kind of let you hear what they sound like. All right. So you can kind of really hear what this compressor does. All right. So let's give it a listen. All right, so as you guys can hear, that's actually a really good sounding compressor. Um, it really brings out a lot in the piano. And of course we were smashing it at some points and then we were kind of dialing it in per different module there. Now, I didn't want to really show you the offsetting because if you are going to use this compressor, and this is my opinion, you should use one of the three profiles because this thing really shines because it's a tube compressor. So make sure you are utilizing the tubes within it, all right? So with that being said, 
Let me actually show you how I would set it on the piano. So we'll start with it bypassed and then we'll bring it in. All right, so let's give it a listen. All right, so I think that sounds really good. So if you noticed on the piano, we are getting a really full low end. This compressor adds a really nice full low end to instruments like this, a really warm sound to it, very nice saturation. That's that tube saturation you're hearing. And kind of what I wanna to mention too is I didn't talk about the different A, B, and C profiles earlier, but essentially B definitely has the most saturation in it, and I really love profile B a lot. C is a little bit brighter than all of them, and I think A is more of a combination between B and C, okay? But I will tell you B is my favorite, and I could probably find a use for it on everything, but you do gotta be careful. You can't push it extremely hard because on you know, specific instruments where you don't want heavy distortion, you're not going to be able to get a lot of gain reduction without, you know, getting a little bit of kind of crunchiness to it. So just kind of keep that in mind. Okay. So let's actually now take a look at what this sounds like on vocals. You act so shy whenever I'm around you. Yeah, I'm around you baby you act so shy whenever i'm around you yeah i'm around you baby you act so shy whenever i'm around you yeah i'm around you baby you act so shy whenever I'm round you, yeah, I'm round you, baby. All right, so this is definitely adding something very nice to the vocals. It's a low-end warmth to them, kind of like a low-end tube sizzle, as I would describe it. Now, yes, the vocals are a little less bright when you apply this, but they are very nice and full, okay? So I wish I can let you hear this in the mix, but unfortunately I can't do to copyright issues, all right? So with that being said, why don't we actually compare this now, the Tone Empire, to the IK Multimedia version on vocals, all right? So let's give it a listen. You act so shy whenever I'm round you, yeah, I'm round. You, baby, you act so shy whenever I'm round you, yeah, I'm round you, baby, you act so shy whenever I'm round you, yeah, I'm round you, baby, you act so shy whenever I'm round you, yeah, I'm round you, baby. All right, so there you have it. That is the comparison between the Tone Empire Fire Child and the IK Multimedia T-Rex Vintage Compressor. All right, so that was my review slash tutorial on the Fire Child Compressor by Tone Empire. So the question is, should you add this plugin to your arsenal? And really it's based upon two different scenarios. So the first one would be, do you have a Fairchild compressor in your collection? If not, then really you should look at adding this because it's definitely the best plug-in version out there because it has the three different models in it. So you're definitely getting the best bang for your buck and all three of them really sound great. So you're gonna get really nice tone and a lot of options if you get this plug-in. So the second snare would be, what kind of music are you mixing? So if you're doing 
you know, a lot of piano music or music that has a lot of pianos in it, then this is obviously a great plugin for that. So you might want to consider it. Um, and if you're doing a lot of vocals that are in smoother genres, so we'll say things like pop music or ballads or R&B, then this is a great compressor for that. If you do a lot of rock or metal music, then this is not the compressor for that. Um, I definitely don't recommend it. Um, so a lot of other you know, engineers and producers might wanna use this on drum buses or mix buses, and that's perfectly fine, but that's not my recommendation for it. So as you can see in this video, I like it on piano and I like it on vocals, okay? So if you guys end up liking this video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe so I'm making this content for you and hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos coming out. And don't forget, if you do like this plugin, I have a link in the description below where you can go purchase it. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to check out my video on the two plugins that make up my vocal dream team. And with that being said, until the next video, I will see you guys later and peace out.